comingforlife.com Von Baron here at drummingforlife.com. Aloha. Hope you're doing well. So today I'm going to share you part one in a series on trading fours and eights and soloing in a jazz style. And uh, I'm going to be using throughout this series the new drumless track collection that I've created especially for you and for this series. And it's called Trading Fours and Eights, Jazz Swing, 4-4 four, four, and 3-4, uh, Practice System drumless tracks and it's very powerful and uh, I'm also going to do another video later in the future that that really shows you exactly how to use it to the max how to get the most out of the uh, drumless tracks for your practice but the most two most important things you're going to get are improved time and timing during your solos and creativity the two very important things today I'm going to share with you about bebop phrasing. Now bebop phrasing is something really important and you can always hear the difference between the drummers that have that got that and understand that and the drummers that don't. And it's actually a it's a pretty simple concept uh, and it, but it's going to take a little work for you to really really get it inside and get it kind of internalized. And let's just get into it. Okay so first off I'm going to teach you about bebop phrasing here and uh, Bebop phrasing is a little bit different than other kinds of phrasing. And what I mean by, by phrasing is, uh, in this case, we're just going to talk about, strictly talk about the eighth note and how the eighth note is felt. So in jazz, we're used to feeling it as a kind of triplet feel. And uh, as like a one triplet, two triplet, three triplet, four triplet, one triplet, two triplet, three triplet, three triplet four triplet kind of feeling, right? And oftentimes what happens, uh, especially during fours and eights and solos, is that drummers start to really to kind of take that triplet thing to the max. So everything ends up kind of sounding almost like a shuffle instead of sounding like bebop phrasing. So it sounds more like this. So one, two, three, three, four, uh, uh, uh. That's what the fours end up sounding like. The jacka, 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 kind of like the flat tire thing, flat tire effect. But actually what it is, is bebop phrasing is in between. It's in between the triplet thing and a, and a straight eight. So it's not going to be one triplet, two triplet, three triplet, four triplet. And it's not one and two and three and four and. All right, so it's not going to be straight. It's not going to be full on triplets. It's going to be in between. So it sounds like this. This is a very, very, very subtle difference. And it's probably the most difficult thing for jazz musicians to get a hold of, especially when they're learning how to play for the first time at any instrument, because it ends up being that janka, 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 flat tire effect, that shuffle effect. But that's actually not, that's not real bebop phrasing. That's not real kind of jazz phrasing. It's more like that's the phrasing. So it's not, and it's not, it's, and I don't know if you can hear the difference. Go back and listen to the video a few times. You'll start to be able to hear the difference. Okay, that's very key. That's very important for being able to phrase appropriately on your fours and eights and solo appropriately on all of your jazz tunes, okay? Okay. Okay, that's how, that's how it's supposed to sound. It doesn't sound like this. 
does it sound like this. Okay, it's different. Okay. So. If you want to get a handle on this kind of bebop phrasing thing, I encourage you to go check it out. The Masters. Uh, there's a really great trump trumpet solo. I always have my students learn this, learn how to sing it. It's Miles Davis trumpet solo on Kind of Blue album, So What. It's legendary. It's epic. It is, to me, the epitome of jazz phrasing, of jazz language. And if you're not familiar with that I encourage you to go check it out. I encourage you to check out as much jazz as you can. Listen to as much jazz as you can. You've got to learn the language. But for now, I just want you to practice getting that bebop phrasing. So remember, it's not... There's some inflection in those notes. You can try this pattern. It's a great way to practice your bebop phrasing because brushes are very, are very soft and, and malleable as opposed to sticks. So... Well, I hope you enjoyed learning about bebop phrasing. Thanks again for watching. And as I always say, keep on drumming. Take care. Drumming for life.